So it's been just over a week since Apple's WWDC, and while the hype has definitely died down surrounding the M2 chip and especially the new MacBook Air, it's always good to revisit objectively after the dust has settled. Within their presentation, Apple had a bunch of new announcements including iOS 16, iPadOS 16, macOS Ventura, but most noticeably the beginning of the M2 chip lineup, starting with the M2 MacBook Air and the M2 MacBook Pro. Most popular of the two is definitely the redesigned MacBook Air, which actually exists alongside the 2020 released M1 MacBook Air. The M1 MacBook Air still remains a popular choice today, which is why I went out and bought one just for this video, so today I'll be diving into whether or not the M2 MacBook Air really kills the M1 MacBook. We'll talk about specs, pricing, and my opinion on deciding between the two. So what makes the M2 MacBook Air so special? Honestly, it's new and shiny, it's powerful and looks damn good, but let's just summarize what's to come. In 2020, Apple released their M1 chipset, which on its own was a marvel hitting the tech landscape, and just under two years later, they started the second generation of custom silicon with the M2 chip to be found inside this new MacBook Air. Coming with it is an increase in power of about 20% overall, which is a great bump, and we'll touch on performance briefly in a bit, but apart from that, there's a massive redesign which really makes this notebook stand out. Coming in at only 1.13 centimeters, this is one of the thinnest, most powerful notebooks available. And whether you love it or hate it, they took some cues from the MacBook Pro 14 and 16 lineup and introduced a notch. For me, I've been used to this for months. But honestly, this allows them to bring an even larger screen within a similar tiny form factor. The camera sees a nice upgrade as well, going from 720p to 1080p, which is definitely a welcome upgrade. Apple has been putting out some lackluster webcams as of late, so hopefully this new camera does a good job. Not that it entirely matters, but we will be able to use our iPhones' cameras on macOS Ventura, which is pretty sweet, and this will be an update that you'll see on both the M1 and M2 MacBook Airs, that's something to keep in mind. And there is a bump in speakers as well, going from a 2-speaker to a 4-speaker setup, and if these are anything at all like the MacBook Pro lineup, these will be incredible. And let's not forget, they're bringing MagSafe to the Air, which has been a welcome addition to the Pro lineup. But there is a huge deficiency they've maintained from the M1 Air, and that's Thunderbolt 3. The two USB ports unfortunately will still only be Thunderbolt 3, which means you will be limited to only one external display on the M1 and M2 chip. At least you used to be. As of recently, Anchor released their new 10-in-1 563 dock, which actually uses new display link technologies, which allows you to have up to three external displays, even on the M1 chip. So for the current M1 Air and soon to come M2 Air, if you're worried about lack of external display support, at least you know there is a solution if you need it. I've tried two setups, one with dual monitors, both running at 1080p, and I actually tried two ultra-wide monitors which was not listed as supported but worked out fantastic. One monitor is running at 3440 by 1440 and the other at 2560 by 1080 and while two ultra wides is definitely enough for me, this dock does support up to triple monitor setups, but definitely check out the supported resolutions here. With this dock, my M1 Air with two ultra wides almost puts me at five screens worth of screen estate, which is wild. And each of these setups were running super smooth. The 1080p's were running at 60 hertz, and the ultra wides 50. This dock also covers me for just about everything else, with three inputs for displays, two of which are HDMI and one being DisplayPort. It also includes three USB-A ports, a USB-C port with 30 watts power delivery, and of course Ethernet and a headphone jack. Anchor's latest dock will also charge your laptop up to 100 watts power delivery, so for the M2 Air you will still be covered for fast charging. Apart from the fact they share Thunderbolt 3, there is a lot in common and a lot different between the two machines and really everyone will place value on different features. Starting with the price, at the base price, the M1 MacBook Air is $200 cheaper. And let's not forget the certified refurbished units do exist coming out of the Apple store and pushing that gap even further to $350 savings. The refurb tech coming out of Apple is practically brand new, so just keep that in mind. Of course, there's the M2 chip, as mentioned, bringing an overall 20% increase in power to the entire system. But if you're a creative, the M2 chip adds video encoders, which can increase performance by up to 40% when it comes to video editing. If this existed for me when I bought my base 14-inch MacBook Pro, it would have been an easy decision to go with the M2 Air had it existed. The M2 chip does raise the ceiling as well in terms of specifications, allowing you to spec out a higher configuration in terms of RAM and storage. As mentioned, you will see the better camera, but you'll also see a brighter screen, increasing from 400 nits brightness to 500 nits. Mind you, if you want to close that $200 gap from the M1 Air to match the price of the M2 Air, you could easily spec that machine upwards, increasing your storage or RAM as well. 
Overall, there's a lot new with the M2 MacBook Air, but there's also a lot that's the same really in comparison to the M1 Air. Both of these machines are super tiny and have a battery that will last you days. The battery life on these machines raise the bar for all portable computers, and they're both equally incredible. Their displays are similar in size, but still support the same resolution and 60Hz refresh rate. Both are literally silent when running, and webcam upgrade aside, both machines will allow you to use your iPhone as a camera with macOS Ventura. So it begs the question, is it really worth spending extra cash on the M2 Air? In short, no, not really, but that still also really depends. For the average everyday user, I promise you, the M1 Air is more than enough. It really is an amazing machine. I think the gap definitely widens if you are creative, even as a starter creative. The M2 Air is like the diet MacBook Pro from the M1 Pro and Max lineup. It's kind of there, but not quite. If time is literally money, the M2 chip will definitely work better for you. The video encoders really do make a big difference here for time and on-the-go rendering. For anyone else, the M1 Air is still an absolute beast of a machine that will serve the everyday person. For me, if the M2 Air existed when I bought my M1 Pro base model, it would have been a harder decision to make at the time. If you are super duper not sure, just buy one or both and make a return. Apple does have a great return program, so definitely make use of it. And if you really are hell bent on giving Apple your money, $200 saved from choosing the M1 Air or $350 from refurbished, you could use that on a set of AirPods or even Apple stock. But overall, the M2 Air certainly does not kill the M1 Air, but it does open up the options for those who don't quite need the Pro Power, but will still see benefits from the M2 chip. And all at the same time, there's nothing stopping you from picking up the M2 Air just because you want to. If you have some extra cash burning a hole in your pocket and you want the latest and greatest, go for it. But I still recommend using the compare page on the Apple website. Either way, with either machine, you'll definitely be winning. Anyways, that's been it. Thank you again for watching. Catch you in the next one.